Hey there, folks. This is Kristen Williams with The Trends Advocate. And today I wanted to talk to you about media bias. We've covered a couple of stories in the past about extraordinary claims that reporters, for some reason, take on face value. They simply assume that these absurd stories featuring trans people as the villain of the story is somehow true and requires no fact checking at all. Well, over the weekend, the Toronto Star published just such an account. In this account, um, this account features an elderly woman going to the YMCA. See, this elderly person, she went to the changing room, and so a male-bodied individual approaches her completely nude. Yes, completely nude in the middle of the women's changing room. Not only that, this person has an erection. <laughs> so, imagine this, a male-bodied individual with an erection, completely nude, in the middle of the women's changing room, walks up to an elderly woman and hits on her. That's the story. And of course, the Toronto Sun went, wow, that's really plausible. Let's just run with it. Let's do no fact-checking. Let's not call the YMCA. Let's not do anything. Let's not try to corroborate any of this. We're just going to run with it. And you know what? Here's the kicker. So uh, my colleague, Autumn Sandine, contacted the reporter, the journalist, over there at the Toronto Star. Now let me read to you what he told her. I, I don't even know what to say about this. Okay, here it is. It is, of course, not possible for me to substantiate most of the stories I'm told, and frankly, I don't try. And frankly, I don't try. A journalist's duty is to fact check those claims. Look what happened to Jane Doe in Colorado when the Pacific Justice Institute painted her as a predator. You know, this kid in a small Colorado town that she is a predator. And, of course, the international press ran with it because, you know, who does fact-checking anymore? And it destroyed her life. <laughs> and it landed her on suicide watch. And all of that could have been prevented by a journalist simply doing their job. But no. No, they didn't do that. There's the assumption that these wild stories are somehow always correct and that there's no need to do any fact-checking, any verification. And here again, in uh, the Toronto Star, we find such a story. And this story, supposedly this anonymous individual who sent an email to this reporter made these claims. Well, since the reporter has failed to do any fact-checking, I thought that I would do it. So I contacted, I contacted every um, uh, YMCA in, uh, there in Toronto, and not once did this story fail to shock and surprise the YMCA employee. No one, no one had heard of any incident even remotely resembling this. No one. It just didn't happen. When will reporters stop doing this? It has to stop. When this kind of stuff comes across your desk, your first instinct 
should not be, ooh, this is sensationalistic. This will be a great headline. Let's run it. No, your first instinct needs to be, oh, I need to do some verification before this goes to press. That's what your first instinct should be as a professional journalist. And time and again, time and again, it's not. Professionalism takes a backseat to sensationalism. And if it ruins a young girl's life in the process, hey, well, I guess that's the price of putting out copyright. It's got to stop. I implore professional journalists everywhere to stop doing this. Don't participate in that kind of destructive culture. You have a duty to fact check, to verify these claims before you put it out in the public. You need to do that. And so, just to make my point clear, here are numerous people from the uh, YMCA talking about their experience with uh, this story. You will hear their shock, their confusion, and you will hear them time and again say, yeah, no, we've not had any complaints of anything like that. This is the first we're hearing of it. What are you talking about? And where can I get more information about the reporter who wrote this? Good morning. Thanks for calling the YMCA. Jesse speaking. How may I help you? Hi, Jesse. My name is Kristen, and I read in the Toronto Sun uh, an, um, a disturbing uh, article. So basically, the, the article that was forwarded to me comes from the um, Toronto Sun, uh, yep. Star, excuse me, and it's in their ethics section, and it claims, it says, that someone who claims to have been transgender was in a uh, woman's uh, changing room area um, and that um, they stripped naked, had an erection, and began hitting on elderly women. I'm calling to find out if you know if, in fact, that happened. Has there been any complaints? Have you heard of anything like that happening? I haven't heard a complaint. Um, if you would like, I could definitely ask um, my manager. Hello, my manager. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I have Patrice, uh, our manager, on the line. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hi. Hi. No Good morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Hi. Um, so did um, he explain the situation? Um, he gave me a brief overview. I got you calling about an article that's a little bit disturbing that you've seen online about our why. Right, right. So um, in the Toronto Star, um, it says that... Um, Is it today's so, date? Um, I think it, it may have been yesterday or Saturday that it went up. Um, uh -huh. And uh, because I got it yesterday. Um, oh. and, and, and it says that... Um, uh, so this person who wrote this reporter claimed to be uh, one of your patrons and that she was an elderly woman, and that she went to change out of her swimming suit, and um, she claimed that uh, an individual who asserted themselves to be transgender um, was you know, allowed into the... I, I was calling up to find out if any, if you had heard of any complaints being made to the YMCA of that type. No, I certainly haven't. I would suggest to you that um, if you're right, if it is a reporter of some professionalism and there is a report of something, they would do some investigation on their own. Hello? Hello? Oh, oh okay. Hello, um, My name's Kristen, and I read a disturbing... Um, um, piece in uh, the Toronto paper. The story is that this individual, and I, I, you know, this is just what was printed in the paper, that this individual claiming to be transgender um, 
had, was undressed, fully nude, in the women's locker room with an erection, um, hitting on elderly women. That oh. story sounded kind of, mm, well, um, it sounded extraordinary. Um, yeah. And so I wanted to, because the story ran without any corroboration, um, I wanted to, you know, call the YMCA and just ask, have you had any complaints of men claiming to be women uh, going into the women's locker room with erections hitting on elderly women? I have never heard of anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> I didn't think so, but I thought I would, This is in you the know, paper? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, well, That's thank you. So just to be good. clear, nothing like that has happened there. No, I've never heard anything like that. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye. I, I was looking at the Toronto Star, and it had something in there about the why, and it was a bit disturbing, so I wanted to call and just kind of verify some of the things that are read. Okay, uh, well, you'd like to verify. Sure. So what happened was in the Toronto Star, it had a, a story that was published on Saturday. Did you have any complaint by anyone of a male-bodied individual in the women's restroom or, or in the women's changing area with an erection hitting on elderly women? No, to be honest with you, I've never heard of anything like that. So <laughs> I'm so surprised. It was in the Toronto Star? Yes, yes, it's in the Toronto, Toronto Star. Star. Oh, okay. okay, so sorry about that. I have no idea about that. I'm sure I would have heard about it. So, um, Well, I'm hey, I it. really, really appreciate, uh, yeah. I really appreciate uh, you talking to me. I, I, I felt that perhaps um, I, my guess is that someone just sent him a prank email and he took it on face value and didn't fact check or anything, didn't contact the Y, printed it because it's such an, a sensationalistic story. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, all right. Um, okay, thank you thank so you much so for much. calling. You know. Yeah, no, I read the article. Oh, yeah. The article and I read your email. Uh, so, so um, was there um, any situation like that uh, that you know of? Was there any complaint made about a, a man uh, going into the women's changing area, stripping nude, having an erection, and then hitting on elderly individuals? I, nobody has reported to us anything like that. Oh, uh, that's what I was thinking. Uh, that story just seems so extraordinary, uh, and coupled with the fact that it had no corroborating evidence at all, uh, and that they had not bothered to contact the why. Um, uh, uh, I will just... be very, very. Um, yeah, there are there are several things there that are. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I, I've, I've contacted a couple of the YMCAs in that area, and everyone is saying the same thing, that no one has heard of anything like this, and the very notion that there would be a nude meal in the middle of a women's changing area, sitting there with, uh, uh, you know, aroused, talking to women, that no one would complain about that, that, you know, that just doesn't sound right to me at yeah, all. Um, it sounds very, yeah, uh, uh, I manage two centers, and mm -hmm. I have not heard anything about that. Right. And in mm -hmm. my career, by the way, like exactly that description. Right. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, um, whenever I called, uh, I guess it was a main number or something, the YMCA, yep. uh, they kind of indicated that they uh, were thinking about contacting the newspaper or doing something where there's some sort of com communication with the reporter. Um, is that, are, are you all going to contact the Toronto Star and ask them, I, I mean, because it just, it really kind of lends this air of menace to it. 
to the YMCA, right? You know, that you okay. all would allow someone like that to hang out in the um, in the women's area. Um, it, it, so yeah, I'm going to, uh, I, I just wanted to hear what you have to say because I thought sure. that you had more information on this. So I don't, I'm, I'm going to talk to our communication uh, people and I don't know exactly what we're going to do. Okay. Uh, but uh, we have a, a good reputation of uh, managing these things better than a lot of people, a lot of organizations. Right. And in terms of uh, we have diversity, respect, and sensitivity to uh, uh, to everybody. Right, right, right. Well, um, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for calling me back. Thank you for taking the time to take my call. I really appreciate that. No, and thank you for getting in touch with us, and uh, uh, I hope you have a great year. Eh? Oh, you too. Thank you. Okay, bye now. All right, bye-bye.